Hello and good morning and welcome to another week in our garden. It is a little cold, we've had some rain in the night but it seems to be drying out now so we'll be able to do a little bit of harvest but first I just want to show you the progress of the double digging. I'm double digging all the brassicas patches and putting in manure deep down and none in the top spit so that the roots can go down and get it. This area, this big U-shaped area, has all been double dug and deep manured. If you remembered, the rhubarb is there. Just got the crowns popping through, so that's fine. I have put a mulch of good rotted manure around the plum tree and just put a bit of soil on top as well. As you remember I did the pH test on it with the electronic tester and so I've dug in a little bit of granulated lime. We'll test again in the spring before we plant and if need be and then we'll put some more on or leave it as it is. I'll just show you the progress now of the actual piece I'm doing. Now this is as far as I've got. We haven't had the best of weather this year, but I've been progressing along steadily. Remember, when you are double digging, it's quite hard work. So do it a little often, and that's the best way to get through it. I've got this plot here that I'm standing on to finish. And then that one there, move the frames. Not obviously not do underneath the tree, but I shall mulch underneath the tree, get the tree mulched up nicely, and then from a section of it, I shall get ready, double dig the same way. Now we have double dug and fertilized the onion bed. If you can remember, we did that. That is now settling down nicely. I don't touch it now until let the winter take the soil down and then that'll be ready for spring as well. I need a section doing for the leeks and the celery which will be double dug and then that's about all the double digging done then but there's quite a bit still to do so a little bit of good weather and I'll be able to get on with it. Now we are going to harvest a little bit for next week's meals so as we progress up the garden we'll harvest from one end to the other and then I want to show you how I'm getting ready for the holly rings. Now while Diane fetched the wheelbarrow I did lift two of these leeks not many left now now what I didn't tell you last week that the tops when we get to the bin I cut those off wash the bottoms and tops go in the incinerator don't go in compost -y. don't put anything with rust on especially on leaks into your compost bins because when you if you reuse the compost back into the garden the rust doesn't die it needs to be incinerated or put in the bins and taken away now we'll just lift a couple of swede and two or three of the turnips. The actual uh, swedes are actually quite hardy, they'll be perfectly alright out here unless the weather gets really really bad and then we'll do the same as we did the celeriac, just put a bit of straw around and they'll be fine. The turnips not quite so hardy so they're best used or stored in some sand, damp sand in the shed. But what few is left now, we'll get those used up. So let's get those swedes up. Nice one here. That's a nice swede. Don't be much bigger than that. There's a bigger one here, we'll take that. If you just loosen them and give them a twist they come out of the ground quite well. Turnips are not the biggest so I should probably take four. 
not that one though, look, that one's damaged, so I'll pop that on the path and we'll pick that up later. There you are, look. don't take much harvesting. Three, four. If we have four, that doesn't leave many. More ones that are left will go nicely into the soups. Give it a nice taste. These four would take purple tops and if that size is the best tasted ones. The tops won't be wasted because we'll give those to the chickens. While I was digging, I left three chard in. The others, the red ones, don't seem to like the wet weather too much. But I left these three green ones in. They're in for the chickens. As you can see look, over there, they come down every morning after they've had the seed for breakfast and have the greens to go with it. So the, the rip pieces on the chard is where the chickens have been. Being there's, uh, there's not much fresh grass growing up on the top, we'll leave these and then they'll come down. Likewise up there, I've got some kale that I set outdoors and they come down and eat that every day as well. So we'll leave that for the chickens. I'm going to take a few of these spring onions. They have been here a while as you can see, but as I come down with the digging, they'll have to come out. And what Diane said she'll do is give them a good wash, clean them up, chop them, and put them in the freezer. They'll go for about three months in the freezer, perfectly all right. She'll open freeze them and put them in a bag and then just take whatever she wants out. I'll just take a few out to say we've got some up at the house anyway. Right, they're well rooted. But we'll wash that and they'll come out. The soon part when you get some water on them. We'll just nip up to the top bed yonder and uh, we'll have some cabbage, cauliflower, carrots and parsnip. Right, this is the cauliflower we'll take. I'll just take the band off and have a look what it's like, see whether it's worth lifting. That'll be fine, that's a good collie. It's just beginning to open so it's just right for harvesting, don't leave it any longer than that. Let's get it out. There you are then. A bit of mess on it, obviously from my hands again, but that'll wash off. Good cauliflower. While I'm here, I'll just take that cabbage just there. It looks like we've got one or two of something eating these, probably slugs because it's so damp. I should pull it the whole thing up if I can, yes. And then we'll take this bit of scruffy off it and it'll be a perfectly good cabbage. I'll just show you that how the sprouting's coming along. We have been enjoying it, it's very nice, but what you have to watch out for is once it starts to flower it comes out very very quickly, especially with this weather we're having. But we have had quite a bit of it. Now we've took quite a few, we took some yesterday I think as well. And it's still producing, but as I said before, just watch out for the flowers. I would normally take these covers off now. But we have that many partridge, pheasants, pigeons, all coming in for their meals. And my chickens, they like them as well. So I have to just keep these covers on. It's not to protect them from the bugs this time of year, it's to protect them from the wildlife and the chickens. Now we're right up on plot A where I grew the parsnips this year. This is the first time we've actually come to them this year. And now a nice lady asked me how your parsnips are doing. So we'll lift one or two and show you how they're doing. Now, I'm not the best of ground for parsnips, as you know, so it, we'll see. 
the tops have all died down this last week or so I haven't been able to get there to clean them but I don't think they're worth cleaning because we'll be lifting them all soon so we'll clean them as we lift right I use this little post hole spade it seems to get deeper right let's see what we've got Ooh. It's going to take more than that to get him out. There he's coming. Two. We're having two. Oh well. At least it's parsnip shape this year. <laughs> That's about the one that is to it. That's not bad. I'm pleased with that. Here are the small one to go with it. I'm not pleased with that one. I'm going to lift another one. See how they're going. Oh, they're in well. Oh, it's moving. Let's have a look. Uh, two. Two good ones. I'll leave the soil on the garden as normal. Two good parts. There is one at the side of it. I left them in pairs. So I shall have to take the one next to it as well. So it'll be a small one. There you go. They'll do nicely. And it's got that lovely parsnip smell when you lift them. The first four parsnips, and they are parsnip shape, I'm very, very pleased with that because usually there's the several fingers on them. But they'll do. We've taken the cover off the carrots and we'll lift a few of those. We have had quite a few. There have been some weird and wonderful shapes, but I can show you the taste was out. Anyway, so that's just the first one. Believe me, they won't be all be like that. They're a bit of a hit and miss on this land, as you know, the carrots, any root crops. So there's a couple there, not very good, but the rest will be fine. Let's see what we can get. Bit of a bit of a hit and miss with them, but we'll get a good handful and then show you. A little bit better there, look, as we go down the line. They're just beginning to split a little. But I think a lot of it this year, we haven't had the best weather for them. There you go, that one's got a rare sprit in it, look. But they'll be fine. Wash them up, they'll be okay. There we are, look. The bigger, but the badly split. Now I think we'll reject those three. That one's really gone over, look. That's no good at all. That's not even salvageable. Dump those. Yeah, again, split. I think next year, what I'll do is I'll grow quite a few different varieties of carrot. They'll be over that side where the parsnips were. And we'll do lots of different varieties and we'll see which ones will do better on this heavier land and then we always seem to grow the autumn king and it, we're getting a lot every time they get to a size they're just splitting so 
let's have a few varieties and see how we go next year. There's a few carrots there, we'll make something of that. But as, as I say, let's have some test runs and see, see if we can do better. We've had some gusty wind and one of the bushels has blown over. Look, it's one of the smaller ones, but what we shall do this week is we'll harvest that one because it's broken. And then we've got, as you can see, looking through, there's quite a few brussels there. Yeah, it really has broken that. It's snapped off, but it'll be fine. There's some nice brussels on it, so we'll use those. I know people are not so keen on brussels, but try them roasted. They're absolutely beautiful. Just before we go in the shed and do the vegetable washing etc I'll just show you what else I'm doing in between the digging and jobs. I'm taking this compost, this is all garden compost and vegetable waste rotted down. Now I'm going to put this between the strawberries and on the raspberries. There's no manure or anything in it, it's just compost from the garden, grass mowings, leaves, everything goes in. That's leaves of the cabbages by the way, not leaves from the trees. All gone in, there's little bits of wood in it etc. But it's, that's no problem because we just rake those up when they're on the surface. I'll just put a little bit in the barrow and show you how to tip it on. As you can see, it's made excellent compost. There is bits of wood in it, etc. The big pieces I'll try and take out as I do it. So when I was making this, I turned it twice down the bins and then I keep topping this bin up until it's really full then shut the lid and leave it, let it go down there's all the waste from the kitchen except for the potato peelings and the onions go in as well so there's quite a bit gone into it but it's rotted down quite well it's took it's took about six months, I think, to get into the condition it's in now. But it would have been usable at four months, I would say. I, I brought the barrow down and I'll show you what to do. Not too particular with this. I just put it between like that. I put it on quite thick, not actually on the plant because we don't want we don't want it on the plants itself just yet. We'll wait till spring and you'll find that most of it will wash in anyway. There's some in here as well. Very good compost. Some of these strawberries have actually got flowers on it this time of year. In. I just leave it like that and let the the weather sort of wash it in. I don't go too close to the gravel edge else I'll find that I've got it on on the gravel as well. I showed you what I will do to all the strawberries and now this is what I do to the raspberries. Similar thing, just spread it along but this can go on top. And because they're so shallow rooted, this will help keep the winter off those roots just below the surface. I just tip what's left on and just spread it out to show you.
I shall also top dress the other side which are the earliest it's not a non-stick barrel this one and just same again just let the weather do the rest I say that will especially the raspberries will give it a nice overcoat if you like for winter and it'll just protect those roots a bit. I shall continue with this when I come down the guard I usually fill the barrow now and on the way down to do the digging just bring a barrow load down and put it on so it's an ongoing thing for me. Now we'll just nip to the shed and we'll show you what we've harvested and quickly show you what I've got ready for the ringing. Now this is our little harvest for this week, lovely vegetables, got the cauliflower, somebody with dirty hands did that but that'll clean off when we get up there, carrots, nice colour, cabbage, solid as a rock that is, good cabbage, couple of leeks, two swede, good swede, turnip, a Brussels stalk, that's that one that fell over, that would be nice. Some very nice parsnips, very pleased with those. Some onions, spring onions. A little bit of kale, we took a bit of kale while we had the, the net off. That's a good harvest for the week, very pleased with that. I'll just nip in the shed and show you what we've got prepared for doing holly rings which will show you next week. I'll just show you quickly what we have to get ready for doing the holly rings. So we'll start from this end. We have the straw, we have the binding wire, the ribbons mainly red, we have the baubles to put on. I get these from that we use, I get these from the cheap shop. There's a few in there from last year as well. They're plastic so there's not going to come to any harm if they do fall off. The berries and then we've got of course the cones. These is what we've picked up local while we've been out for our walks. Quite a few of those. Some are very nice. Some are small and some are large and the thing is to grade them as you do them. And of course all the rings that we'll need. I'm only doing 20. That's what I'll be doing with you next week. Of course I've been out and seen everybody that supplies the materials. We have friends and neighbours that say yes take what you want off our conifers and there's some holly there if you want it. So and because they do that we always make sure we give them a ring for giving us the materials. It always helps. They're going to deliver them for me for people who have pre-ordered them. And it helps with the funds for the village hall, so I don't mind. So that'll be for next week. Now that'll be it for this week. Many, many thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And take care, everyone. We're not far off now getting a vaccine, so let's all behave ourselves until we get there. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye now.